and the length of this material is L. And on the loading, we know that this, we can, for example, measure the deformation called the delta. So we know that the strain will be equal to uh, delta divided by original length. So in this material testing, for example, if we gradually increase the magnitude of the load and recording the deformation here, then we can calculate the value of the stress respect to strain. So likely you can record your data point during your experiment and actually this will form a linear line with the slope. So this is a stress and this is a strain. And the slope is defined by Young's modulus. Okay, so here for one dimensional, and again, we don't consider the induced deformation in the lateral direction, which means here we don't consider portion ratio. So under this situation, stress equal to uh, E multiplied with strain, and that can be available from the curve here. Okay, so that is the one dimensional uh, push law. Very straightforward. And here the E is called the Young's modulus. And here is a review. And the second topic is about a three dimensional description of Hooke's law and for isotropic material. And actually, this appears in your e learning of ES331. And how to do this? And so let me turn off the slides and and I will work on blackboard. So this is a full one-dimensional description. If we would consider two-dimensional um, deformation, the two-dimensional description, 2D descriptions of the material response to for example, axial loading. So here, let me exaggerate this material. So the same model, we this material has the uniform cross-sectional area A. So assuming that is a uniform cross-sectional. And this has a Young's modulus E. And for example, its original length Okay, and then this one is again under the union uh, the uniaxial loading, so which means the loading applied in one direction. So uh, follow up from our concept, we expect the material would have the net change of the deformation called the delta. Let me call it delta x. Let me call it delta here, delta x here. Okay? So the delta is the net change in the uh, x dimensions. So here, for example, here, let me pick up this is x and y direction. Okay, and now because we consider two-dimensional description, so that means that we expect the material will undergoing deformation in the lateral, which means in y direction as well. So in y direction, so that means here this material will be something like this. So 
So let me call this as delta y. So delta y is the net change in the y dimensions. Okay. And because here you know, we have to, we need to describe what is the net change in the induced lateral directions. So here, in terms of the two-dimensional uh, description, we have to introduce additional parameter we call the Poisson ratio nu. So nu is the Poisson ratio and that by definition is this, the magnitude of delta y divided by the magnitude Sorry, not the magnitude. Uh, where is the ratio? Uh, over here. Oh. oh. Okay, so this the absolute value means the magnitude. And the epsilon y, epsilon x, is the deformation uh, in x direction. Epsilon y will be the deformation in y dimension. So let me call this dimension, say, uh, how about this? This is ly, and this is lx. So this is lx, this is ly. Okay. So by definition, this is a Poisson ratio. So in this way, we'll be able to measure the change in the dimensions of the, uh, if we, the force applied, the force is applied in the axial direction, then we would in, have the induced deformation in the lateral direction, that is due to Poisson ratio, okay? And the Poisson ratio in this way you can see is this. Um, we have, um, How about this? We put in here, right away, put in this direction. Um, so, how about this? I give you a summary. Uh, so, um, so, in summary, For an axial loading as shown like this, so that means uh, the loading applied in the axial direction and um, so in the axial directions which means in the x directions for these illustrations, we have stress. Stress will be equal to Young's modulus multiplied with strength in x directions. And in the lateral direction, that means in the y directions, and we have induced strain and per the definition of the Poisson ratio in magnitude that is equal to strain multiplied with the uh, the Poisson ratio multiplied with strain in x direction and this gives us the magnitude relation but however from here you can see once we have the axial loading you can see if we have extension in the direction of the loading 
then we expect reduction of the dimension in the lateral direction. So which means reduction, that means negative. Okay, so that is a summary. Again, the axial direction is the direction in which the load is applied. Okay, that's a, that's a terminology. So with those things, bear in mind, then we can build up the three-dimensional So here is the really <coughs> description of book flow. And again, everything.